Thank you. Please be seated. Many may wonder why in the Presbyterian tradition we have people standing as the Word enters the church. And it has just become part of our tradition because we do believe in the authority of the Old and New Testament. And so in a respect of honour, stand to honour the authority of God's Word. And so this morning I welcome you to our service of worship and um, just another five more sleeps and then it's Christmas. <laughs> and um, we are just grateful this morning that we can come together to worship God the Father, the Son and Holy Spirit. That this all day I want to look at that for the yard. One of ons saak kom, want dit is die tijd van die jaar waar ons herinner word van die geboorte van ons Jesus Christus. En verochend kom ons gee om al die Heer vir wat hy vir ons doen, elke dag van ons lewe. Ons op. En Maria het gesê, ek besing die grootheid van die Heere, ek juig oor God my verlosse, omdat hy my, omdat hy na my en my geringheid omgesien het. Kijk, van nou af sal elke nieuwe geslag my gelukkig noem, omdat hy wat machtig is, groot dinge aan my gedoen het. Heilig is sy naam. Hy bewys om verming van geslag tot geslag aan die wat om eer krachtige dade het hy met sy arm verrug. Hoog brug is in hulle eie man het hy uit mekaar gejaag. Mag hy bus het hy van troene afgeluk en gering is verhoog. Behoeftig is, het hy oorlaai met goeie gaves, en reik is met diamande weggestuur. Sy dienaar Israel, het hy te hulp gekom, dier te dink aan sy beloftes, van ontferming. Soos hy dit toegesê het, aan ons oorspaardes, aan Abraham, en sy nageslag, tot in eeuwigheid. Amen. Let's stand and sing together our opening hymn. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father.
pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you this morning that we can gather together in your presence. And Lord, we thank you that we can come together this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and by the empowerment of your Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, it truly is so wonderful to come together and to sing such wonderful hymns that remind us of your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for pardoning our sin and giving to us a peace that endures. Thank you, Lord, that you are present with us, the power and grace of the Holy Spirit to cheer and to guide. Indeed, Lord, we thank you through the, the, through the, through the power and grace of the Holy Spirit that you give to us strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. And that you give to us so many, many blessings. Indeed, Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, that morning by morning your mercies are new. And thank you, Lord, that each day your hand provides for us. Even, Lord, when we may not see it, yet you provide. And so, Father, this morning we just come with great joy and thankfulness into your presence. Thank you, Lord, for this time of Advent, for this time as we near Christmas Day, and as we come together to give you all the praise, glory, and honor. But dear Lord, as we worship you, as we glorify your name, we know, Lord, that we have sinned against you in word and deed. And so, Lord, this morning we come and ask you to forgive us for our sin. Father, we plead that in your grace that you may pour down upon us the blood of Christ. For we know that his blood cleanses and that his blood renews. And so, Father, this morning we come and say, forgive us, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we pray that as you have cleansed us through your love and through your blood, so Lord, indeed, we pray that you may pour down upon us your life-giving spirit. Indeed, Lord, we pray this morning that you will give to us a reassurance of your presence. And we pray, Lord, that as we worship you, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray this in the wonderful and blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Let us continue to worship God with our songs of praise and worship. And come on sing song. Ons is allemaal hier te song. Vergade in sy naam.
And all God's people said, Amen. Please be seated. Before we go into our prayers of intercession, just one or two intimations. Firstly, a reminder about Christmas Day. I can actually be there Friday. It will be Christmas. Um, despite COVID-19 and it being quite a challenging year, somehow it's just blown by. And uh, on Christmas Day at 7.30 a.m., there will be an Afrikaans service. Seven days of Formula, so the Afrikaans and Gas Distance Days. And then the English Christmas service will be at 8.45 a.m. 8.45 a.m. And then just the next I just ask you a master to see you go in at the Imamo and on the Cat Barber and I see you in Suk. Wachter is een lijst, als je die lijst kan doen voor, en ik zal u een beetje meer naar over vertaal. En dan de volgende one. Just a reminder of our combined services for the rest of the school holidays. For this Christmas time, there will be no worship service on the 27th of December. That is next Sunday. There will be no worship service, but there will be a combined service on the 3rd of January. So that's so only a dean's year's volgende week, the 27th of the December week, but that's so definitely in this uh, half team of the 3rd of January. And then just a reminder again, if you would like to ask at the back, is a piece of paper, if you just like to fill it in, you let me know if you want one, and I will contact you about how it all works. And that's the intimations for today. Let's bow our heads and come before God. Almighty God, we just thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, that despite all the challenges of life, especially in this time of COVID-19 and we are told through the second wave. Father, we are just grateful that this morning we can come together in the precious name of Jesus and that we can forget the worries of life and that we can be still and know that you are God. And Father, this morning it would be my prayer that each one of us may be blessed with your peace, that peace of God that transcends all understanding and guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Father, you are our God. You are a good God. For we know that after you created this world, you looked upon it and said that it is good because you are all goodness. And so Father, this morning we come into your presence with thankful hearts. For we know too that you are a God of grace and of mercy. And so this morning we come before you and bring our prayers of intercession. We bring to you all our worries, all our cares and concerns. And we say, Father, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we pray for our nation, South Africa. We pray, Lord, that you will be with all those on the front line dealing with COVID-19. As again, the hospitals are filling up and as the staff are overworked. Father, we just pray, may your grace be upon them and give them the power and the energy to fulfill their calling that you have given to each one of them. Father, too, we pray for our protection services and we pray for the SAPS at this time. For Father, we know that criminals do not rest at this time. 
And so we just pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you will be with our men and women in uniform who are doing their job. Father, we pray your grace and protection upon our farmers and upon those who live in villages and towns and cities. Father, may you protect us from the scourge of crime. We pray, Lord, that those criminals may stop the humanity and that they may come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Oh, dat ons is dankbaar dat ons vanochtend in die baie mooie dag gesaam van wees. Dankie Heer dat in die moeilike tijde dat ons stil kan wees en dat ons ons gebede aan jou kan bring. Vader, dit is my gebed dat die heilige gees uitgestoot sal word door die kerk en vader ons tot vir hen leven ons bedeer het dat die heilige gees die bewonders en die bedinge sal doen en ons bedeer het dat die die kerk sal bouw vader we pray for your church at this time of COVID we pray Lord that we may not be afraid, but that we may trust in you, Lord, and we pray, Lord, that you will bring revival upon your church. We pray, Lord, that you will be with your church at this time, and that we would not cower, Lord, but that we would be salt, and that we would be light. Lord, I pray that as your church, that we may touch people's lives, that we, Lord, may not be overcome by fear, but, Lord, that we may share your light. And indeed, Lord, too, if there may be any striving amongst us as your brothers and sisters, Lord, I pray that we may look to your kingdom and not to our own need. And Father, may we look to the need, your need, and may we share Christ with the needy world. Father, you know each and every one here. You know their prayers, you have heard their prayers. And we just pray, Lord, that your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I would like to share with you from Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verses 10 to 20. Luke chapter 2, verses 10 to 20. Let us listen to the word of God. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the same that has told them concerning this child. All who heard wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. May 
God bless to us the reading of His Word in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray to you. Almighty God, we praise and thank you for your word this morning. Father, may we too take these words to heart. And Father, may our hearts be open to your spirit this morning. And may you speak to us. Father, ons dank u vir u woord. En ons bid vir ochend, dat u woord in ons harte sal brand. En ons bid hier, dat ons gehoorzaam sal wees, en dat ons u woord sal volg. Ons bid dit in Jesus' naam. Amen. Dit lees in Philippense hoofstuk 2, verse 5 tot 8. Philippense 2, verse 5 tot 8. Die saamte gesintheid moet in julle wees, wat daar ook in Christus Jesus was. Hy wat in die gestalte van God was, het sy bestaan op opvonderlijke wijze nie beskouw, as iets waaraan hy hom moes vastleg nie, waar hy het omsel verneerde, dier die gestalte van een slaaf aan te doen, en aan mense gelijk te word. En toe hy as mense verskyn het, het hy omsel verneerde, hy was gehoorzaam tot in die dood, ja, die dood aan die kris. Two Christian brothers in the Lord were allowing their arrogance and pride to destroy the work of Christ in the church in Philippi. Therefore the Apostle Paul calls them to humble themselves. It reads in Philippians chapter 4 verse 2 I entreat you dire and I entreat Sintichia to agree in the Lord. And these are the two brothers that were striving with each other. These were the two brothers that were so proud that they were willing to destroy the work of God in Philippi. Just over 2,000 years ago, it was not pride and arrogance that brought the church, the body of Christ, to birth. It was the humility of Jesus Christ that brought the church into existence. It was the trots and arrogance that was born to be given to the church. But it was the humility of Jesus Christ that the church to its stand brought. Christ has himself given to us. op die kruis so dat ons nie so dat ons nie meer in sonde mag hebben nie maar dat ons kinders van God kon word tot in eeuwigheid it reads in that well known verse in John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And God did that with grace and humility. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, taught us the path of humility. He not only, he, he not only did it once on the cross of Calvary, but He also showed great humility by being born in a stable and using a manger, a feeding trough, a stall for his bed. Christ could have been born in a palace and could have been lying or could have been asleep in a crib made of gold. But James, God the Father Almighty, in his grace, chose a dirty manger for his bed. He 
chose the path of humility. It reads in Luke 2 verse 16, And those shepherds went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Gedierende hierdie skrif besig, dink ons aan die eenvoudigheid van die geboorte van die Seen van God. Ons sal miskien kom verwacht dat as hy hoegenaamd in hierdie berge gebore sal word, dit in een paleis of een herenhuis sal wees. Daar was een Europese monarch wat sy hof bekommerd gemaakt het dier dukkels te verdwijn en in vermomming tussen sy mense rond te loop. Toe hy gevraag is om dit ter wille van veiligheid nie te doen, het hy so geantwoord. Ek kan nie my volk regeer, ten sê ek weet hoe hulle leef nie. Dit is die groot gedachte van die christelijke geloof dat ons een God het wat die leven ken wat ons leef omdat hy ook dit geleef het en geen speciaal voordeel door gewone mense geëis het nie. Isn't it just wonderful to know that we serve a God who knows what we are going to do? Many people when they pray to God or when they deny God or, or when they don't pray to God and say, but God doesn't understand what I am going through. I can tell you right now that in the person of Jesus Christ, God knows what you are going through. He knows what it means to be angry. He knows what it means to be in pain. He knows what it means to suffer. He knows what it means to lose a loved one. He lost his earthly father Joseph. And I'm sure it must have been a hard enduring time for him. God knows your joys. God knows your suffering. And God knows you. It was John Riskin who said, I believe the first the, I believe the first test of a truly great man is his humility.
William Barclay states that these were in all likelihood very special shepherds. We have already At the shepherds who looked on the temple lambs were the first to see that God who takes away the sin of the world. Just think of it. The other of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Sanhedrin, they think they know everything of the Bible. They know the Bible back to front, front to back. They know all the right rituals. But who does God choose to see first? He comes to see humble shepherds. Even when God is right in front of them, even when Christ is right in front of them, they can't even see the Christ. But yet here are humble shepherds who are given a message and they go to a stable and in the manger they find the baby and they know that he's the Christ. Messiah of the world. So many times people think they know everything, but they know nothing. God will always take that which is humble and despised and He will use it for His greatness. They may not be perfect people. They may not say the right things. They may not even have the right words to say. But if they stand under the authority of God and allow His Holy Spirit to work through them, God will work miracles through those instruments. Have you ever noticed God doesn't take those who, who, who know it all, but He takes those who are humble enough to be used by Him. Therefore the question remains, why the manger? Yes, the secret was failed. Ja, ons kan seker wees dat Joseph en Maria dit so goed as moendlik skoot gemaakt het. Hulle het dit ongetwijfeld op die een of ander manier gevoel om een gemakkelijke bedie te maak vir hulle babiekie. Maar daar is geen manier om nie die bedie iets anders te romantiseer nie as een voerbank vir dieren wat veil was. Die eerste bed vir die Seen van God was nie een koninklike wegenie. Dit was een gewone dieren voerbak. The manger was just a dirty feeding trough for animals. Second, the manger was a sign. The angel of the Lord said something to the shepherds that was almost too good to be true. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Luke 2, verse 11. To believe this and bear witness, they would need a sign. The angel gave it. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Luke 2, verse 12. Swaddling clothes. Every baby in Bethlehem was wearing swaddling clothes. That is not the sign. The sign is a manger. In fact, this must have sounded so wildly scandalous. The shepherds probably did not think that there No sooner were the words out of the angel's mouth, you will find a baby 
lying in a manger, the heavens exploded with praise. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory in the highest. Can you imagine it? I've never seen an angel. I've never seen a whole group of angels. But just can you imagine shepherds sitting in the dark field by a fire with stars in the sky and suddenly an angel appears and suddenly a multitude appears with them. It must have been glorious. Glory to God.
a hard road. But there is no greater joy than to be on this road with our Savior. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. This is no moderate joy. This is great joy. Glory to God in the highest. Great joy to us. Great glory to God. Therefore, in conclusion, the manger and the cross are a lesson on humility. To follow Christ, you need to be prepared to handle yourself. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, took the path of humility. And we need to follow his example. It reads, and I conclude with these words from, from, from Micah chapter 6 verse 8. He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Amen. Let us pray. Mighty God, we give you thanks for your word to us this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you take the simple to defy the complex. Thank you, Lord, that you take the simple and confound the wise. Thank you, Lord, this morning that you remind us that the manger and the cross teach us humility. And so, Father, we pray this morning that we will humble ourselves and that we will walk with you and that we in faith will accept the things that you require of us. And indeed, we would pray, Lord, that at this time that we will glory in the cross. That we will be grateful for the cross. And Lord, that indeed we will humble ourselves. That we will repent of our sins. And that we will walk humbly with our God. And indeed, Lord, in thanksgiving, we give to you today our tithes, gifts, and offerings. And pray, Lord, that as we give them, as we walk out of church, or as we give our tithes as a gift to you, Lord, we pray your blessing upon that which we give you. Your Father wants to sit on God for alles wat jy vir ons doen. Dankie vir ons dagelikse brood. Dankie dat jy dagelikse saam met ons loont. En Vader, ons vraag vir oogend as ons aan jy ons dan opgegeen. Vader, dat jy dit sal gebruik. Tot jy naam. En dat ons dit kan gebruik tot jy van jy naam. Heavenly Father, indeed, bless us this day as we go into this new Bless us as we glorify and honor your name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand and sing together our closing hymn. And all the ones are better good, let me and was so good. Amazing grace, our sweet to the sun. Let's stand.
e os fóruns estão aqui quando ele dita então vamos que não encontrais aonde pode ter ele aqui para não ter ele aonde ele dat jy saam met ons is. Dank jy, dat jy die saam verneder het, en dat jy op die kruis vir ons allemaal dood gegaan het. Thank you Lord Jesus, that you humbled yourself, that you became nothing, and that you gave yourself for us. Lord, I pray that each one of us may be worthy of what you have done for us. Be with us now as we go into this week. Grant us grace and peace. And Lord, may we glorify your name in all that we say and do. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore.